This is the 20th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guy Batteries, Pro, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live where we are going to talk about bass fishing. Special in-studio guest. I was like, screw it, we'll bring him in. I remember when I was when I was back at uh, the University of Oklahoma competing on the bass fishing team and Mark Jeffries brought me in. I knew nothing about what I was talking about, but he brought me in on the serious XM days back. That's kind of, I was interested. I had a... Uh, I had a message. Someone was like, "Man, have you considered like an FM or a, a serious radio show?" And I was like, "Dude, like that's it was funny. That's how it actually kind of started. They did a radio and then went to Sirius XM before the stream." And uh, I apologize. I am on the verge of, uh, you know, I'm on the verge of Starlink. I think. I think I've got the old uh, transformer that's going out. So fortunately, I mean, we'll be blurry, clear, blurry. Jackson Marber is sitting across from me, president of the OU. What are the, what are you allowed to call it now? What is it officially called? So we uh we call it the OU Bass Club. That's what we have to call it from the university. We can't say we're a team because of Title Nine and stuff like that, but we're officially the OU Bass Club. I gotcha. So the OU Bass Club uh brought a couple hats in, the OU Bass Club team and then the the youngsters hats. The rope hats are where it's at. I mean, it, they're hot on the market right now. I mean, we got so much demand for them. Those sold out like on the first day we launched them. Yeah, it is. Uh, but I figured we get you in. We're gonna hit the lake later today. I'm kind of in in uh, prep mode leading up to where uh, practice starts for the Bass Nation Championship on Grand Lake on the second. So I want to get my string stretched a little bit. So we're gonna go out to one of the many bountiful and plentiful bass rich lakes in the central Oklahoma area uh, and see if we can't catch a couple. So excited to. Uh, Excited to get in the boat with you and see how it goes down and get the bass cat out. It's been like a couple of weeks. I had my buddy who uh, hasn't been back in campus in like 12 years. We went to, well, I think you were there too. We went to the University yeah. of Oklahoma football game this past Saturday. Talk about a tough game to watch. It was, uh, it was not ideal. Uh, I see Rich in here. He said, important question, better season outlook, OU football or fishing team. So that's what we're just going to chat today a little bit about, uh, you know, we've had, uh we've had you know jordan leon in the past we've had a bunch of guys who came from storied collegiate programs and they were talking about uh oh tucker smith i just had tucker mm-hmm. smith on did you have you fished did you fish against tucker smith i don't believe so at least not to my knowledge at least yeah at auburn and he was talking about you know like you know 30 40 people how much stuff that they in life of what it is to be a finance and entrepreneur major what you're a junior junior right now and also the president of the OU team. Yeah, absolutely. It's and I don't know whether it's it's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I know my internet sucks, guys. We're working on it, but the audio is good, so that's for the for the uh, iTunes listeners as well. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or if you're totally screwed that you like reached out for a little bit of help with the with the program because I mean, yeah. I know. So. In my opinion, it's only downhill from here, so <laughs> uh, we're, we're kind of at rock bottom right now and we're building. But I think this could be huge for us if this goes viral. Yeah, uh, just talk a little bit about your background, how you got into it, what got you into college fishing. Uh, you're 20 years old, so I mean, it's pretty much been around for the duration of your life. When I was in it back yeah. in uh, back in the late. 2000s uh it was kind of new we were all trying to figure it out but i mean you came in with like a lot of college fishing a lot of high school fishing oh, so yeah. talk about how you ended up at ou how you ended up on the bass fishing team then how you ended up the president of the bass fishing yeah, team. yeah so just a quick background on me so i did fish in high school uh, i'm from dallas texas originally i fished at lake highlands high school part of a thsba which is now one of the biggest high school tournament uh organizations in the united states it, it's absurd how crazy it is we're averaging like 200 boats per tournament and I actually founded my uh, my fishing team at uh, my high school. I was part of that and a few other buddies. We founded it together. Um, so then I went to OU, had uh, some older guys there. And what really got me into fishing was just I anybody that I fished has really been older than me. Mm-hmm. They are fished in college before, you know, they were two or three years older than me. So that's kind of where I got my experience from, kind of how I got into it. And I had a bunch of buddies fishing at the Texas Tech team. 
really good program over there. Um, and I kind of like learned from them. And so I wanted to fish here at OU and I had no, I guess, real close friends on the OU team when I first joined. Mm -hmm. So I was just purely by myself and the OU team, or I guess it's technically the OU club, but, yeah. uh, you call it team. Yeah. Okay, right. Call it whatever. Um, it just, it, it wasn't where it should be. I think it had a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was no real organization to it. Um, you know, I, I do know the old president. He was great. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a really good guy. He's a big hunter though. Um, I, I like, he's actually, I have a lot of classes. Like, I think I met him. Did he, he was like working the gate at an OU game really one time and like i had my ou an ou bass fishing shirt on and this dude was like dude what's that and I was, he's like i'm the president of the team yeah it's very possible he's a great Would have guy. been last year daniel carter maybe i don't know yeah so he's a he's a big hunter he was great um he was also as well trying to get the team back on track and doing whatever he could he's a great guy i'm actually i'll tell him about this whole podcast i'm sure he it, i don't too. know if it was him or not um but basically i became president as of january of 2024 um, I wasn't really elected. I kind of just, it was a volunteer role. Somebody had to take role. Yeah. And I took upon that. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's a, he this runs. Dude? Yeah. That's yeah. Him. yeah no. Just, yeah. I ran into him at an OU game last year because I was wearing an OU really? fishing shirt and he was like, what the heck? He's like, I was no, the president of the team. Yeah, and then yeah. it like, it, I added him, followed him on Instagram. Never anything ever happened. Yeah. No. Yeah. He just got hurt actually. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, really good guy. But, I mean, so anyway. Yeah. We're trying to get the team back on track right now. It's, I mean, we're, been trying to hit up a lot of alumni, you know, a lot of old sponsors trying to reconnect with them. And I mean, just our biggest issue right now is that we have zero funding coming. Yeah. In. We have these hats we're selling right now, but it's very minimal. I mean, and you know, you know, as best as fishing is expensive. Yeah. Especially traveling. So when you came in, there was a team like, and, and I think this is interesting. This is what 98% of schools face. You mm -hmm. see, you know, the top end, you see the guys who are winning opens now who are yeah. going to the Bassmaster Classic. You see the Bethels and you see uh, is, is Dallas Baptist still a they're juggernaut. Deep, yeah. You see the Dallas yeah, Baptist. DBU. I remember right. when I did, I used to do a website called the College Bass Zone and we went and uh, I filmed like a, a, a like a Cribs episode with them. They had like private ponds that only if you were on the bass, you probably know about this. I that, mean, they get I mean, they're private. So they yeah, they get a lot of funding help. and they get funding and stuff. But 98 percent like how when you go to these college tournaments, how many guys are rooming together, staying in their trucks, scraping to get by to represent their university? Yeah. Just to get on the water. I mean, people are crowding houses. They really are now. I mean. On the, what kind of sucks about us is that, I mean, we having to get our own hotels mm -hmm. and stuff just because, I mean, we're not staying with our, you know, our anglers that are on our team, you know, we're all staying by ourselves, which I really don't like that at all. I'm trying to get us all together, bond, like get an Airbnb. I mean, but like you see teams out there that are getting Airbnbs. I mean, they, they're they putting 10, 12 guys in a house. Just so they can make it, make it roll because they don't have the funding and yeah, they're doing exactly. it on their or, own. A lot of people are sleeping in their trucks and hotel parking lots. You'll see that or just at the boat ramp. People really? Yeah, still even to even a now. lot of those smaller schools that, you know, don't are still building up their programs mm -hmm. and they don't, don't have the funding yet. Uh, what all have you competed in? I know that I would say there's three main collegiate yeah. series. There's Wade Middleton's. Uh, I think it's still the Boat U.S. Collegiate Bass Fishing yeah. Series. And then there's the Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the uh, MLF College Series. So yeah, if so you I wanted to, could you fish? infinite number of these things yeah to my knowledge and basically all i mean i read all the rules just so i can I'm able to inform the yeah. team about everything and you can fish them all you really can i don't think i've ever come across a problem where you can't fish anything um i fish a lot of the collegiate bass Trail texas tournaments okay um now they actually just shut down and now uh texas bass is now handling that trail okay um and that was one of the best trails i think you could ever go to because it's 100 percent payout it was fantastic. I mean, you get, you know, 60 to 70 boats, which I mean, they would struggle with getting numbers sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think that's kind of why they shut down a little bit, but they were great. And then I fished, you know, Oklahoma bass a bit. Um, we fished that trail. We were at Keystone actually a few weeks ago. Okay. Um, that went all right. We didn't, we had a rough day one, but day two, we figured it out, but not enough to compete. Um, it's crazy. They, Those fish are shallow. They're 24 yeah, I mean, seven. We, like they are on the rocks. It does not matter whether the water temp is 40 or 100 yeah we caught fish on seven different baits that day it, it, it was it was crazy um but and then i fished um i fished dardanelle last year yeah. at the afco open yeah. up in arkansas and we paced 
25th out of like 200. Was that still is Arkansas Tech still involved in that at all? Yeah, they're 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 I think they are actually. Yeah, so I, back back in the day it was called the ATU Invitational, the Arkansas Tech oh, really? Invitational and uh, Darno was pumping out. It was like one of the only lakes in the area that was pumping out like mid mid 20s bags so whenever we went there it was always like a Mm. big deal that was like one of the few opens that was kind of unrelated to anything Mm. else they would use it as like a big fundraiser for their team no yeah darnell was great they actually just had darnell on ou texas weekend that's why we couldn't go oh i mean i'm sorry i'm not skipping ou texas weekend Uh, this would have been a good year to skip a good year i mean even my freshman year we you know 49 oh but yeah no darnell was a good time we ended up placing top 25 out of like 200 boats Mm -hmm. What are like the entry fees for these tournaments? Free, yeah. Afco is free. Okay, is it? But, I, I know mean, they're they're big sponsor of the show. Yeah, you don't uh, win. I don't I can't remember if you win cash prize or not. But okay, you win prizes, and okay. I mean, they're really good prizes. Uh, but I mean, so CBTT, it was uh, I think it's one hundred and seventy five bucks, one hundred and fifty bucks, including big bass, mm-hmm. and then Oklahoma bass. Um, they're Fees are running between 100 and 150, including big bass. That's kind of what it is. I got you. Uh, but you also have to pay a membership fee, though, at the same time. You got to buy your $25 annual membership fee through bass. You got to buy it through, you know, your Texas trails. Mm-hmm. And that's how, you know, that's how you get your big pots. It, it's just like any other region, even though you're in college. I mean, you're, you're five, 600 bucks in. Yeah, you know, traveling yeah, gas. A I mean, thousand bucks thank in God by the time you travel out, and do that. How is it on uh, school now as far as like, do you are you able to get like letters to get off to go fishing or that was yes like big no. when i was in college really? because i think the bass fishing team uh back then was originally mm-hmm. like we qualified as like club sport see we don't right now. We're so then really we club. would do the letters and they'd get us off but i guess they had like a meeting one time when they were like dude like we have this like fishing program and they're asking you know they're asking for like thursdays and fridays off like every single week I mean, so yeah, they could go I'll, practice they're could like wednesday I they're would, like what know? the hell is going right. on here right we uh so we have a letter we fill out or a form and it's it's purely a travel form so the school mm-hmm. knows that we're just yeah. traveling but you can get get excused so i mean the only way to get excused is you just going talking to your own professor and be like hey we got this deal yeah. can you and some are chill and some are like fishing yeah uh yeah my freshman year professors are like they don't care yeah. Uh, when you your older professors that you get in your major, they really do care. But I feel like you you're kind of like entrepreneurship as a major. Yeah. Like I feel like those professors might yeah, be they're, like, they're way more laid back. Yeah, honestly. they would probably yes. be like, okay, like this is cool. Like I'm yeah. like if you're in the entrepreneurship, you're you kind of understand that maybe you think outside the exactly. box a little no, bit. And a hundred percent. But my core class is freshman year when I was trying to go fish, you know, leave on a Thursday or Friday, like, yeah, sorry. I mean, you gotta be here or I'm you know, you're yeah, getting marked absent, missing assignments. I'm like, really, you know, I'm just I, I try to tell them it's like a collegiate sport and which I mean, it, it is, it really is, yeah. but they didn't understand that. Yeah. I mean, I used it. I parlayed. They said that the chip Porsche who's, who still works for uh dynamic now, I don't get together enough with him. Uh, but I, I parlayed this into a career like the fishing at OU, which led to the internship with the bass owner and Mark mm-hmm. Jeffries, which led, you yeah. know, as a communications major. So I was actually using my communications to, I was writing articles full time mm-hmm. after to where I was freelancing for a bunch of companies in the industry. And then, you know, traveling mm-hmm. for the lead series and then transitioned to BTL. And here we are now. And who knows what the hell is going to happen yeah, in the next right. five to 20 years. But I mean, I plan on, I plan on doing this. I, I mean, I'm to the point now where I, I'm pretty boxed in with the old skill set. So yeah, locked <laughs> so in, ready to go. I, I mean, being in that industry it, that long. I got to kind of make it work. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could do, uh, I don't think I could do uh, an office at all. Are you doing any of the Bassmaster stuff? Like I know that they've just kind of revamped that None with the, the legends stuff. and the Lunkers trail with uh, the three tournaments to try to make the classic and all that. You know, I wish I could, but I mean, just it's hard to do that stuff when you don't have funny coming in yeah. from the club, traveling, having it, you know, do everything by yourself. How do most of these other clubs who don't have uh, school back support or uh, one or two like, you know, wealthy donors, how do they make it work? Or is it kind of a lot of just scraping by and fishing what you can when you can? A little bit. You know, I haven't talked to as many schools that are kind of in our situation. Honestly, I've kind of talked to more schools that have figured it out and I've gotten advice from them. But I think these smaller schools or schools like us that are struggling, I mean, they're, I think they're just trying to send guys to a bunch of local tournaments and mm-hmm. just kind of make their way up there, get sponsors. I mean, a lot of these Oklahoma, I mean, the Oklahoma Bass, they're always usually have Oklahoma schools here. Everyone's mm-hmm. standing their teams kind of but us, unfortunately. And that's what I'm really trying to get back up. Do you guys still do the Battle of Oklahoma between like UCO, OU, uh, Oklahoma State? I mean, they, 
No, I don't think so. I mean, all these schools fished Oklahoma bass. Yeah. But there's no dedicated tournament, I don't think. Yeah, that might be a great option. We had our club tournament at Texoma last year or last spring. Yeah. We did that. It was not a bad turnout for the first time. Uh, I think that's the first time we've ever done that. I, I helped put that on. and We had about 30 boats there. Oh, nice. I, it was a good turnout for yeah. us. You know, we raised some money. People, I think, actually donated some extra money that tournament as well. You know, with as many, I mean, you've got uh, you got James Elam and Zach Burge mm-hmm. over at OSU. You've got a number. With as many teams that are in Oklahoma, I could see, like, a fundraising tournament for the organizations so between the Oklahoma schools mm-hmm. where you – each team raises money for their team and then you all go and compete for yeah. a, we could have uh there used to be a trophy for that like it used to be like the I mean, battle of oklahoma but that would be, be like so a cool really have, cool uh you just pass around the trophy yeah really year. cool fundraising yeah. event to get people behind to where like you know we'd all give to the ou team if you right. went to osu yeah. and you wanted to you could come out with a specific shirt for it exactly and that's I, i've actually never heard of that before so that's something i would definitely. yeah i mean we at. had like a, it was like a big trophy really it, yeah it was like right after i like i think we did it the last year i was in it so like oh eight and then nine ten eleven it was actually a pretty big deal yeah, I think after those early teen years, uh, mm-hmm. the club started dying off a bit. Is yeah. from what I have learned or heard. It's really hard to keep it going because you have, uh, you unless you have like a coach that's a tournament fisherman or that is affiliated with the university yeah. who understands how things are going and is actively making sure, mm-hmm. like you're relying on. Well, I mean, you're trying to figure out your life and get it started. Yeah. It's a passion, but, but you're relying on like a series exactly. of competent. You, guys who have it together you know how to fill out paperwork and yeah. then you're done and you have to have someone coming up so it's amazing uh to see the teams that have kept it going like the bethels but they also have people that don't change even though the the players exactly. change yeah which i mean we have a a lot of these schools have coaches but aren't employed by the university mm-hmm. um but we we have an advisor slash coach and he's employed by the university Re- he's supports me 100 mm-hmm. percent. supports our team 100 percent. but he also has a real job he has to do yeah. with the university i mean he, he basically signs all the paperwork for the school you know doesn't ask any questions he helps us out he helps us get funding from school organizations like you know like our student government association or whenever they do those big fundraisers mm-hmm. he helps us get as much money as we possibly can he's a big kayak guy he fishes he's from oklahoma oh nice yeah he lo- he's a big kayak. we give him you know we uh we, we get on them about that a lot, but yeah, yeah but it's it's, it's all, we got it's all a lot love. of people who fish out of the kayak that listen. I I I have not yet experienced like a legit kayak I'm bass fishing kayak, experience. No. I don't know. I, I'm I'll keep an open boat, mind on it. Yeah, you get in a boat, you don't want to get in a kayak. That's all. I, I, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I would agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many? So how many are on the OU team now? So, I so this is how I built the program so far. Yeah. So we have a club, obviously, and yeah. then we have a team. So we probably have between 18 and 20 guys in the actual club. And I've got about six to eight people that are on the team that actively want to go fish tournaments. Okay. And that's how I see it. That's how I'm building the program yeah. right now. And basically we divide that up by how many dues you pay. If you're on the team, pay a little more. Yeah. Club, you're not paying as much, but you still get hats. You're still part of the program. You still know what's going on. You're going to our tournament or our club tournaments. Mm-hmm. And and these club guys still, I'm trying to give them roles. Like our club guy, like, one of the club guys who doesn't fish all the tournaments, but he's our secretary. Yep. So he does the forms for our team guys. Um, and then team guys, probably six to eight. A few of us go to tournaments. Actually, I think one of them was going to go to the Oklahoma Bass, but I didn't see them on. There's one going on at Fort Gibson. I just yeah, ended just yesterday. Last week, yeah. Or, yeah, it was the last week maybe. But we didn't send any guys, unfortunately. Um, I couldn't go because my partner couldn't go. Mm-hmm. Um but we're going to Tank Hill here in December. But, yeah. That'll be fun. He's, I've never fished Tank Hill, but he said that's a ton to be there. Dude. That's what I've heard. You're, you don't have any off limits or anything, do you? Uh, Within a certain time. Period. You're good now, though? Yeah, we can fish. Yeah. That time of year? Smallies on an A rig, yeah, on he, the shallow shallow gravel, they will absolutely rip the rod really? out of your hand. He, yeah, uh, he couldn't stop talking about swim bait, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they yeah. will rip the, mm-hmm. they will rip a, uh, they will absolutely decimate a flash mob junior. Yeah, <laughs> like on straight braid, just really? on the gravel flats and just don't don't. Yeah, he said if you hit it right, it's, it's, it's only a one day tournament too, so yeah, that'll be interesting. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, so. We might be going to Possum Kingdom here in November in Texas. Okay, that'll be interesting. Uh. 
so if you were to identify, I mean, you've, you've mentioned a couple of the good and bad things like as a whole, then in collegiate fishing, mm -hmm. for those of us that are kind of, you know, like on the outside looking in where yeah. we only see the top 2% of the guys and the schools that have boats and the rat boats and all yeah. that stuff. Like if you were to, if you could like wave a magic wand for the health of the field, cause we're talking about this a lot in the opens too, mm -hmm. right. And in the invitationals, like the top is awesome, but in order to have like a healthy organization you have to have that top 40 50 percent those guys mm -hmm. that are there that are it's economically feasible for them they make yeah. it work they bring it like would you say as a whole like are there a lot of college programs that are struggling that we don't hear about are there a lot of is there way more money in it than we would think like i mean you talk to a lot of guys throughout mm -hmm. the country like where would you say the average college fishing program is so that, that's a really good question. And I think there are a lot of schools that we don't know about that aren't able to do everything. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't have the resources. They don't have the funding. They don't have the structure for it. But I, I mean, you, you know this on the professional side as well. The industry is growing. I mean, it's changing every day. You know, it's uh, I like to say it's urbanizing at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's something always happening. And I think that's what's going on within the collegiate industry right now. These tournaments are producing more and more, um, you know, boats more tournaments but what's struggling is the tournaments aren't providing big enough payouts for these anglers to travel for you know if i'm coming from the south and i'm going up north there better be a huge payout to why yeah. i'm going and yeah. a lot of these organizations are i'm sorry a lot of these tournament organizations are not doing that so but, they're having like a high-end first place a lot of product yeah for was, the rest of which it which is great right but right. At the same but it's time, not like a open where if you're top 10 you're getting eight grand yeah at somebody least. you know we have gas to pay for fuel we've got you know all these living expenses you got to pay for food. And I mean, I understand like you got to kind of figure it out yourself. No doubt about that. But I would say, I mean, your biggest issue is just financials yeah. in, in the collegiate industry. But, you know, all these other private programs, they got it all, which is amazing. Good for them. But not all of us have that. So, I mean, what you're seeing is, uh, and Frank put, put, put just posted this. He yeah. said, Matt, go to a college event and see the 225 boats and trucks. Unfortunately, money helps. There are like a lot of these guys. It's, but it helps. No it's doubt, independent yeah. wealth. You're talking about, uh, I mean, whether it's the kid who's been selling night crawlers since he was 12 exactly. to afford it. Yeah. I'm not, I would, I honestly don't hold that against anybody, but, uh, that's, there's a lot of the guys who are doing it. It's on their own dime. It is a lot of their parents are helping out yeah. with it, which I mean, good for them. I mean, I wish I could, you know, just go out to every tournament I possibly can. Yeah. But at the same time, like it's, it's a big learning experience. You learn yeah. how to budget for a tournament. You really are. And, you know, there's five tournaments on a series. There's five to six mm -hmm. throughout the year. And you're like, all right, we at least have to fish four. So which four are we going to go to that we think we can win and we can afford that can put us in the championship? Mm -hmm. That's what we had to think of at the beginning of the series. Dude, I, I see some possibilities here. There's so much potential. So, like, like when it comes to a tournament, so I'm like an OU grad, fish for OU. I know a yeah. bunch of guys who went to OU that are into fishing. Mm -hmm. So like I could see, and I'm just spit, we'll just do this live. Yeah. spit bottom here. I could see like a website where you could say, Hey, here's the tournaments we want to fish. And you have like a fundraising where you're trying to get all this out. And I could like go in and donate for like, you have it all broken down. Like here's the entry fee for this event. Mm -hmm. So I could like pay for your entry fee for that. And then my buddy juice who I fish with at OU yeah, could yeah. pay for your gas to that. So then saying. we okay. have, instead of just yeah, like yeah. giving you 150 bucks, but they know exactly where then it's we're going in towards. there and then boom, you've got that covered. Yeah. You have it, you know where it's mm -hmm. going from. And then you've got people that are interested that are watching. Then you feel like you've got a little piece of skin in the game. You're sponsoring yeah, yeah. OU for that event. And then on top of it, you do the hats and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like that's how I could see. And you kind of, you kind of base that fundraiser all around that battle of Oklahoma tournament that you have you know early in the year or something so then you kind of have the funding so you know you've got funding for a september tournament for a june tournament yeah for an august tournament uh, just and, spitballing stuff no, that that's, i mean that's a really good idea actually i didn't i never thought of it like that yeah i mean how the way what i've been doing is just either hats or i've been reaching out to sponsors trying to get money from them or honestly old alumni but you know it's hard to get old alumni involved. it is and the sponsors are hard too because there are so many there collegiate are. teams and uh, we just OU has not made the name for itself that all these other like Auburn A and M are making their names for right now. You know Texas yeah. Tech. Well, the problem is Auburn. it has to keep going. Like it, it's cycles, it cycles exactly, you and know, that's the issue. Cycles. Like once 
I currently I don't have a successor underneath me that could take over mm -hmm. the program yet. I just know by underneath me. But if that's kind of your job, then like, how does recruiting play into exactly. that too? Like, do you pay attention to what's going on in high school, or yeah. is it your job, or is that mm -hmm. just for the schools that have the head coaches that mm -hmm. are doing that? And then like, are there head coaches that get paid in this? Like that actually, actually like no make idea. money at this? I really don't. I don't know if it's a volunteer deal or if they're getting paid. I, that's a great question. I know Murray State has a coach. I know he's very involved with all these Oklahoma Bass Nation tournaments. Um, I don't know if he's getting paid at all. But, um, you know, I'm going to Choctaw High School here in December to one of the high school bass meetings there. So that will be really cool to hear from mm -hmm. young anglers and kind of like how they see collusion fishing. Are there any, like, workshops? Do any of the organizations have a Zoom deal at the beginning of the year or anything that yeah, kind of so, sets you up that says, hey, mm -hmm. here's the best way to raise money. Here's how to run your club any of that so yes and no i know a lot of these schools will go to high schools around them and they'll set up a booth or an expo mm -hmm. they'll go to some high school tournaments that they'll captain for okay um or they'll just they'll go support them as much as they can i know i think i think a and m went to i think there's a there's a bass nation high school event where all the college anglers go to and they represent their school and basically just tell them about their program how it works and I really wish we could have gone to it, but I just I think it was too far for us, or I couldn't go. Um, but that's it's on my list next year to do, mm -hmm. and that's something I'm definitely looking at. Hopefully, to get a bunch of our guys there. And that's how we can really build our name. I'm trying to look for a list here. There's got to be. Uh, I mean, I don't. It's not by like state. It's not by like uh, state or anything like that. Um, but I was trying to see how many teams in Oklahoma. Schools in Oklahoma uh, actually have teams because you see. I like, think it's about eight. Yeah, you'll see like junior colleges pop yeah, up. Yeah, there's Murray State, OSU, Tech schools. Yeah, I mean. So, what is Frank saying here? He said, "Matt, organize one with these. One of these with six schools, include the top two in here. Ideas from the well-run ones. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's it is. So, what's your goal on this? Like, do you want to be in the industry? Do you want to fish? Is this just something that's a passion that you um, know yeah. that you're going to fish the rest of your life? Are you trying to get into the industry? Are you trying to become mm -hmm. a professional fisherman? Um, I, I don't think there's much professionalism in the future for me. Um, I, I, I mean, that, that I wish, right. But yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think so being honest. Um, but I definitely will, you know, I'll have a boat for the rest of my life. I'll keep fishing for the rest yeah. of my life. There's no doubt about that. But before I, the goal before I leave OU is to establish a program that can run, you know, I came in the program, not being great mm -hmm. or, but, and that's my goal right now is to make sure this can run with somebody else taking over. That's what I'm trying to establish. Even if it's not great for me, at least I can be great for another another cycle to come through, like you said. But like I said, after college, I'll hopefully have a job. And the plan for me competitively is I'll fish a lot of working mans, hopefully, like, you know, Tuesday nighters, Thursday nighters. That's what I want to do. And then hopefully when I'm older, I can hop on, like, you know, the ba uh, like the Texas Bass Trail. Yeah, there's a bunch of good stuff there's, down I mean, in Texas, Texas between Bass the Brandon trail, Belt, there, the there's Texas a team trail. Bass Champs, yeah, all sorts Brandon of Belt, stuff. that's huge now. Yeah, I had They're, him on the show. That dude was I saw super that. cool. No, from what I've learned, he's a good guy. Yeah. And he's doing really good things. I know he has a big charity right now, too, that he supports. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, – I really want to get on a trail when I'm older. Just uh, – I think that would be really cool to stay in the game a bit, you know. Yeah. Kind of like – Stay and fit, you know, in yeah. the fishing industry. Dude, the more I think about this, like you think of, I'm, I'm just thinking of the guys I graduated with. You know, there's a bunch of petroleum engineering majors yeah. and stuff. Uh -huh. And you combine OSU, OU, UCO, would you say Rogers? Does Rogers State? Anyway, you, yeah, can, no, you get these together. There's no reason we couldn't do an Oklahoma college fishing fundraising See, weekend would do it. that would cover yeah. that. The OU would support the mm. OU. The OSU alum would support the OSU. Yeah, exactly. And there's no reason we couldn't get that covered. I mean, if you get 50, like if you get 50 people, let's just say you get, let's just say you get 50, yeah, to, to donate a hundred bucks, that's five yeah, grand. Exactly. And then you have one guy with a business that matches whatever mm. you have. And there's 10 grand. Well. And now you know, hey, this is what I'm fishing for the rest of the year. And then, that's how you, I think you kind of get some stability. Right. With it. And I, I, you know, that's something I really need to look at. That's a really good idea. And the thing is, everybody's going to want to do it, but somebody's got to take role. Yeah. And somebody's just got to execute that plan. Yeah. And that's kind of like what has been the issue, you know, here at OU. And that's kind of what I've been taking mm -hmm. on. So, and it sounds like it's kind of a, a common issue. It's not a bad thing. It's just, no, it's yeah. a, it's a, 
it requires a lot yeah. of blood, sweat, and tears. Like I said, uh, it, yeah. I'm sure it's just like any other athletic program where the guys at the top are like, dude, like those guys freaking. I mean, the majority of them though, it's a passion project. No, it really is. And I mean, we're gonna we're in an Oklahoma president's chat, so I mean, I've got every president's number mm -hmm. for, with every uh, college here in Oklahoma. So it's it's definitely easy to communicate with. We just got to get everyone on board. And I promise, year. like, Elam and Burge would be all in on helping OSU. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah 100%. Me and Burge won a national championship there. Really? So, but uh, you are selling the hat. So you're out of, like, one of them. Yeah, so we're out of the 10 rope ones right now. And these are going, like, crazy. It, it was just hard to get these. So we're yeah. waiting on stock those. right now. What is – when did those be – so, like, I dude, so I'm the Richardson 112. This I, isn't I'm a all, Richardson. I'm an R112 guy. 100%. You're an R112. Yeah. But, dude, have you noticed this, like – it's it's crazy. The change to like these kind of was Polinick was on that train a little bit mm -hmm. early with the like unstructured, and I was like, eh, this guy kind of looks like a train conductor. But now <laughs> we look now if that's what everybody's, everybody's wearing. wearing. They're they are pretty comfortable. I mean, but I, I like the R one twelve. So I, that's Do I get all. to keep this one? Yeah. You both, sure? Yeah, hundred percent. Both yeah. of those yours. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. I know they're great. Yeah, like I fish with Craneford and he's big on like the row hats, but he's an OS so he's a big OSU yeah. guy. So like they're like the guy that I my freaking fishing buddy. Like we've got a grudge match right there. Like I don't like yeah. when he wears the when he wears a cowboy stuff in the boat. I feel like it's destined for right. second place. <laughs> you know? I mean they're they're digging up nineteen forty eight championships and putting it on there. I mean, I, I saw you pull out some of those old retro hats. I'm like, those are cool. You got the, the old, old jerseys OU. on the yeah, wall. Yeah, I got all the old OU. I, mean, I should do like a walk through the studio. At some yeah, point. I mean, we uh, I make all of our jerseys. I mean, they're so different than the ones I had in the past, which I mean, nothing wrong with that. It's just really cool to see how yeah. the times have changed. Yeah, it is. It's wild. Uh, we're going to go fishing. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, hopefully they'll have this transformer box fixed. Like when I click on it, it says your connection is unstable. If you're on Wi-Fi, please plug it in router. I am plugging the router. And last time I did filled with water and it took like three people and 10 calls to get it out. But no I joke. am, uh, I've been talking with Matt Steffen, mm -hmm. who is, uh, he's a Starlink guy and he has almost sold me on the Elon Musk Starlink. Really? Yeah. I guess it's like, the deal just gonna switch over to that i think so i don't know i'm i'm very resistant to change <laughs> as i get older i find it very difficult mm. to to change on a whim mm. but, well yeah but before we uh i guess head off and hit yeah. the lake just uh if anybody wants to support the the ou bass team uh my personal information is on the instagram and facebook what is the instagram and facebook i believe it's ou fishing okay. it's, it's just strictly ou fishing and my number and email are on those posts so feel free to contact me uh, directly, or you can you can just uh, e uh, DM or PM our social medias, and I answer actively. I really do everything I can to answer. Um, but uh, if you hit me directly, I'll answer right away. I mean, we're looking for all those help, support, alumni support, sponsors, anything we can do to help get the club back on track and get our guys in the water. I like it. Yeah, we got to work together on getting some stuff, yeah. uh, some stuff dialed in. Hold on. I had this link pulled up, and then I totally bailed. That hat link? Yeah. Mm. Here, I'll show it real quick. And there it is. It's right a good there. day to be outside today. Yeah. No, good good day to be outside. Up, so. mm. uh, like I said, the, the tan one is out right there, but that goes through like a a uh, like a like third party. Yeah, thing, it's just so it's, not... it's a guy that I know that he made our hats for the past few years. He set up a little link for us. Um, I apologize to anyone if they order, ordered merch off the old website. Um, we kind of didn't have access to that and we had to like talk to the company to get that shut down because we didn't have any passwords for it, but we're going to be building a new website here pretty soon. Yeah. You got to deal with a lot, but I mean, dude, labor love. It's awesome to see someone uh, taking care of the program. And I use it as OU because uh, it's where I graduated from. There's the, yeah, that's my Bass life member certificate. And then there my university of Oklahoma degree right awesome. there uh so I'm very passionate about it but i know just as equally there's a lot of guys that are listening to this show that are just a, as passionate about that with the school that yeah. they support their alma mater i think we're seeing that in the sec like it's cool to see all these other yeah. schools like that yeah. you have uh yeah. rivalries with that you never got to play before so oh, like in the awesome, fishing right? world like i i mean south carolina uh get his brandon who does a lot uh he's going to uh be on the show tomorrow Okay. Uh, on btl and talk about uh what he's doing on the coast there and what that coast looks like post storm uh very active in the carolinas but uh we did a hundred dollar charity bet on the south carolina game and i 
legit Venmoed him That's my the hundred dollars six minutes into the game. Yeah, and then he went ahead and matched that. So two hundred went to the uh, mm-hmm. I think it was like Samaritan's Purse, a disaster relief fund oh, over there. Awesome. But I'm yeah. gonna get him on uh, on BTL tomorrow hopefully uh starlink will be fixed by yeah. then and or not starlink the internet and then uh on wednesday matt stefan uh in studio to talk about our uh, master angler challenge that we're going to do november 11th through the 16th with a bunch of live shows and that's stuff awesome. in studio. That's cool. so and just a little speaking of the sec others uh, we're working on something right now we might be having an sec shoot off with, with all of the bass teams in the sec that so there's be been awesome. talk going around for the past six months about it we're working on executing that here pretty soon yeah that would be freaking awesome dude. yeah yeah Yeah. we're working on it i've already made a shirt for it and i'm talking to some of the old sec presidents right now we're gonna yeah if you can get that and you have i think you could you could definitely do enough to get to get your expenses covered for that i know an sec bass fishing uh, shirt we're we're talking to some sponsors already that are uh, actually involved in the mlf so we're working on that right now awesome yeah yeah, that would be fun. I know they just did like a like a rivalry shootout between what Florida and some one of the other schools. Really, I, I, yeah. I missed that. Okay, it was cool. They're trying that mm-hmm. stuff. So, you ready to hit the lake? Yeah, let's get to it. All right, a little short show today, uh, but I wanted to go live. And uh, thanks for jumping on BTO. Yeah, thanks for having me. What's That's your great. over under? Like, I've kind of talked this up. Like, I'm saying, like, hey, dude, like 25 plus is pretty easy blah 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 like we're gonna I, I have no idea what we're doing here it might be a little turnover period we're kind of in that weird fall I mean, transition yeah, but we, we, we walked outside 30 minutes ago like, it feels good it, it is it, nice I mean, that, some solid wind i mean if the sun's yeah. out clouds but i mean i i think we could i would say over under if the line was 25 that's a that's a freaking strong line I, I mean if you said 24 and a half i'd take the over maybe <laughs> but not the 25 25 it's like you know that's game day, you know. Are we are we betting again on game day? Uh, but, I don't know. I just know. So uh, Cranford and I, we made a list, and we we're like within three hours of the house, we picked. Uh, we could name twenty one lakes that we thought we could do twenty five on. Really? Yeah. Not yeah. not I mean, like at will, but yeah. that the potential exists. What, what was that the, number? Should, it was twenty one lakes. Oh, twenty one. Yeah, hours. within within three hours of of Norman. Really? Yeah. Can't name. 15 lakes in Oklahoma right now. You can't name 15 lakes. I'm, I'm from Texas, so like I can name. Yeah, I'll, lakes, I'll yeah. show you a book. There's yeah. a Lakes of Oklahoma book out there. It's got. I'm slowly learning the Oklahoma waters here. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. All right, let's go fishing, dude. All right, let's do it. Thanks All for right, having this me. This has been another edition of BTL. Same place, same time tomorrow. We'll talk to everyone. Then. See ya. <laughs>